thank you so much for joining me today. In today's video, I am going to do a cook with me. I am going to do another instant pot egg bite recipe as well as a banana bread recipe. I know I just recently did an instant pot egg bite recipe, uh, but I did have a ton of eggs. My father-in-law has five chickens and we are constantly getting his extra eggs. And I also had some ricotta cheese that was about to expire. And I looked up to check if I could use the ricotta in egg bites and sure enough I could. So I went ahead and I used it. I believe in this recipe, I used 15 eggs. I ended up using a cup and a half of ricotta and then a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper and three cups of this shredded um, Mexican cheese blend because we always have that. I think that one was from, I don't know, Costco. I think it's Kirkland's. I think we got it from Costco. <laughs> but that stuff comes in handy all the time. My youngest daughter really loves egg bites. They are great when I make them in these big batches and then I just throw them in the freezer and she can microwave what she wants when she wants it. It's a quick and easy breakfast. So here I am filling up the wells of the silicone, silicone egg bite mold. Uh, I do believe these are just baby food molds, um, but they work in the Instant Pot just fine. And now they are finished. I didn't think that I overfilled the red one, but the eggs kind of look like they blew up a little. Uh, so I'm not sure what happened there, but it seemed to happen in all of the eggs that I put on the bottom. So I, it's not my Instant Pot, it was my dad's Instant Pot. So here I am gonna make some banana bread. My oldest daughter loves banana bread, especially the Starbucks banana bread. This is not a copycat recipe. This recipe is my favorite and it is from the Better Homes and Gardens uh, recipe book. Growing up, my mom had that and the beef stroganoff is my absolute favorite recipe of all time. And so as a wedding gift, she got the recipe book for me. I'm not in my own kitchen here. This is my grandmother's kitchen. Um, these are hers and my stepmother's ingredients. Uh, the recipe did call for cinnamon, nutmeg, and ginger, but my stepmom didn't have ginger on its own. She had this like pumpkin pie spice blend, which was cinnamon, nutmeg, and ginger. So I went ahead and I used that instead. All of the measurements were exactly the same. It was like a quarter of a teaspoon of each one. Ironically though, when you get into the recipe part, it never mentions putting the ginger into the recipe. So I thought that was weird. And I have gin, uh, I'm sorry, I have uh, vanilla out because I just thought every time you bake, you put vanilla in things, but this recipe did not call for vanilla. So silly me. Now, when I got to my grandmother's house, she actually already had a bunch of bananas that were ready to be made into banana bread, but I wanted to make a double batch so that we would have plenty of banana bread for as many weeks as possible because we are here for five to six weeks. So I did throw in some bananas that were not quite ripe enough. Um, they, they were a little hard to mix, but it, it ended up turning out just fine. Now, normally I do not put walnuts or any other nuts in any of my baking, but the last few times I've made banana bread, my youngest daughter refuses to eat it and she is the one that's allergic. So this time I went ahead and I put the walnuts in because my oldest and I really love walnuts in our banana bread. Um, but I think I'm gonna be making some more without. So those are my recipes. Thank you so much for watching and please be sure to subscribe.